this edition of DIY3DTech.com's Open SCAD channel. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at uh, assembling this in code. This is a 608ZZ skate bearing, and I do quite a bit of work with these designing different motion mechanics and things like that. So I thought it would be handy to have a version of this in, in Open SCAD, and I looked around and I really didn't find one, so I decided to create one of my own. Um, that was a pretty close approximation to the actual bearing itself. So rather than just creating a knockout, uh, you know, of the size of the 608ZZ bearing, I decided to create a functional bearing because one of the things I would like to do is, is further this model and actually be able to enter it into function animated drawings in the future. But that be it as may, I figured I would show uh, you guys a, a couple different dynamics of how to create an object like this in some of the tricks that I use to do this. So as you can see here, we have two races, an inner race and then an outer race. And again, I'm assuming that the term race comes from these bearings race around them. Um, and you see the red bearings here. So, and you also see that in here we've notched out for the bearings to run in this particular inside race. And there's one on the inner race and one on the outer race. And the way we've done that is we've actually um, used the, if I get it over here, the rotate extrude command, which is a really handy command. So basically, what we've done is created like a, a torus type structure. And um, if we Let's let's pop a quick uh, percent in here and take a look at what that looks like. And you can see it, it in rough rough. It's a donut shape, and we've differenced this donut shape out, and it matches just a little bit larger than the bearing. So actually, you could probably print this out, and it would work. And so kind of interesting. I may try that in a future video on the main channel. Anyway. You, you can quickly see how handy this can become and we'll, we're going to actually use this uh, later on in the de you know in the demonstration to kind of show how you can do some other things with it so I want to remove the, the the percent sign for right now and then just go back and tell it uh, so the other piece that I want to talk a little bit about is the bearings themselves so you might have remembered back in the flange example I gave you some source code uh, to create circular patterns. Well, long story short is I simply use that circular pattern here with a sphere, as you can see here. And um, according to the specifications of the bearing, that there's seven uh, bearings in there. So I, in short, just divided 360 by 7. And uh, boom, you can see the math here. It's the same. I've left the general formula um, as it was before. Uh, again, this could be simplified into one line statement, but I want to kind of leave it so it, it's easy for people to follow and understand how the formula actually works. And so you can see here we create the seven ball bearings which run around the race. So uh, again, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, however, one of the things that I really wanted to get into is a little bit more as you see this outer red band um, that we have here this is the chamfer of the bearing so the chamfer is a release on the edge so you don't have a square or 90 degree edge and which makes insertion into um, its carrier a lot easier so uh, chamfering an object is very important I haven't put internal chamfers on here yet because the intern the internal race is also chamfered um, but I wanted to show you how I did it on the outer ones, and it would work the same for the inner ones, too. It's the uh, same basic concept. So before we do that, though, what I would want to do is I want to hop over here to graphic. And, and what I've done is I've uh, sort of designed out logically how this is going to come together, how we're going to create this chamfer. So in, in short, we start with a square like we have over here. Um, but the problem is when we have a square like this and we just add a circle to it, as you can see above it, 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 it doesn't come out correctly. In other words, the, the corner of the edge stands proud of the circle. And so that's a problem. So to deal with that, what we do is we have to knock out that corner. And we have to knock out the corner uh, in, in, in the same uh, length, high, you know, length and width as uh, the radius of our circle. And this, this happens to be 3 millimeters. So the whole... It's, it's, it's actually a 0.3 on the bearing, so I'm just using 3 for example purposes. Um, 
so it's going to be half of the diameter obviously it's what the radius is and and as you can see when we come down here how it all all works is we now overlay this uh, circle on top of this square with the knockout and then we perform a union and we create this this chamfered edge and, and this chamfered edge is a three millimeter chamfer so this is how we do it you know mechanically to create that edge now if we jump back over into OpenSCAD uh, one of the pieces I want to come out here and do is show is so the first thing we do is we have to do the knockout for the chamfer so what we're doing is uh, number one we're creating this this top cylinder and you can see this top cylinder and then what we're doing is we knock out the center of this top cylinder uh, to make uh, sort of a square edged again donut and it's a little bit hard to see there but you can kind of see the edge being removed here and that's what's critical because this is what's creating that 90 degree cutout inside the cylinder so if you think of this picture if we go back to graphic this is the cylinder sitting on its side so there's an opening in the center and we've now taken a notch out of it and so that's what we're doing with this piece of code right here is taking that notch out now what we do is we come down here and we create the the chamfer and we do it the same way we did as far as creating the inner race for this is we in short extrude and translate up a circle so we have a circle of the diameter of 0.6 millimeters we want a chamfer of 0.3 millimeters so that's the radius of this so we we on the z-axis we translate up half the dif distance of the bearing because we are at center equals true so we're a seven millimeter bearing height bearing so 3.5 would be half of that and then we have to come down to center it so if we go again go back to the graphic example we need to center on this plane on this this uh, uh, you know on the y-axis right here so here's the y so we come down to the center plane and we center on that and that's 0.3 millimeters and boom we have it and so if I go back and turn this off now I've coded these as red so you can kind of see you can kind of see them on the bearing itself and so that that's how you create it and it's actually pretty simple and straightforward once you get used to it and you can kind of package up this code now because I want the objects the object itself to be sort of separated I have not joined these all together because I want them to remain as separate objects so I put that out here um, what what I what I should do and what I will do in a future version is I will join the the uh, chamfered edges together with the main body of the bearing but uh, for right now I've just left them separate as, as well as the ball bearings and pieces so I can sort of demonstrate how everything goes together and um, I do have down here I do have I do have the bearing covers so if I uncomment this these lines of code uh, and hit this you see now we have the bearing covers on here just like on the standard bearing if you would buy the the bearings and how they would come I just wanted to show the inside now a piece of this too what I want to do is is also um, some of the logic of this too because I've built this as a module so as you see here I got 608 ZZ now I did not make this parametric because obviously the measurements of the 608 ZZ bearing are absolute you could make this parametric and design whatever size bearing you want and I may do that in a future version but for right now I wanted it all self-contained inside one module uh, because what I want to do is if I come down here and I do if I do translate and then 608 ZZ and then um, this and then let's just translate up 20 millimeters and then hit this so I've got another bearing now 20 millimeters up and then let's do this let's enter a cylinder so we're gonna do a cylinder and we're gonna make it a height of 30 millimeters and then we're going to do a radius of four uh, because our our bear our inner race is eight mil opening is eight millimeters and we're going to do true and then we're going to hit this 
and um, I probably need to do a translate up. Um, let's do trans. So translate up. Let's translate up, say five, just for example. Oops, still not enough. Let's go 40 for first impressions. All right, and then I'm going to just translate up by 10. And we'll make this work yet. All right, there we go. So I'm not going to try moving this around too much because doing the video recording on this laptop is plus is trying to render all these bearings and stuff, as you can see, is taking quite a bit. However, what you kind of get the idea of here is I've just now created an axle and uh, two bearings. And I've just coupled them together with basically three lines of code. So, so long as I have this module, the 608ZZ module, I can just place that bearing anywhere in three-dimensional space and create a connecting cylinder, um, you know, as a through shaft. So this is one of the big powers, to, at least to me, about OpenSCAD. So this is one of the reasons that I wanted to develop this module as I, develop, as I design other products. Now, all I have to do is call the 608 module and I can put as many many of these bearings in an object. Now one of the things I would probably tone it down a little bit with uh, regards to one of the, the challenges here that's taking so much but I wanted it to look nice for this video is FN equals 100. I would probably knock that down to 60 or maybe even 30 if I was rendering and and the, um, the same thing if I go down here um, uh, is just looking so again my circle for the the Taurus so I have I have in short my FNs really set uh, pretty high and then the same thing for if I look here for my spheres spheres I'll spit that out correctly I think um, I have it set for a hundred so so there's a lot of facets on those so it's taking a lot to to compute those and I would probably knock those down if I was messing around with a pre-rendering you know maybe 20 or 30 and it would be substantially better because right now it's it's rendering 14 of these spheres uh, in there and it, that takes a lot of computing power so anyways uh, hopefully uh, shared a number of points with you you've learned how to create a chamfered edge you've learned how to insert bearings to create a race uh, the powers of a module to be able to replicate an object. So, um, again, uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it in promoting the channel. I've uh, been doing a lot of work to, to get this off the ground, so appreciate all the support I can get. Uh, make sure you sus subscribe to the channel. A lot more of this stuff is going on. Uh, again, my idea is to really build a set of these modules, and then once I get a larger set of these modules built, is to start building larger and larger objects and sharing the workflows in that creation. So again, thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.